What's up ladies and gents? This is Casey Kid coming at you with another Destiny video. Today it's almost time for the hard raid. In fact, right now actually this is a really late night video. I just finished doing the normal raid on Monday night and I decided you know what I better sit down and I better do tomorrow's video, Tuesday's video, right now because I'm not really gonna have time after I get home from work and then I'm gonna want to take a little bit of time just to get my characters all set and all ready for my warlock to hopefully go into the hard raid tomorrow. So I figured I better just start thinking ahead and I better do tomorrow's video today. So since we did the normal raid, I think I've got a really good idea and a really good question to pose for the hard raid. Is the Dark Drinker going to be the magical eraser that it kind of is right now in the Axis fight? Right now the Dark Drinker can pretty much make up for any of your mistakes that you're going to be doing. And as you'll see in this video, we actually do have a mistake that goes on and yet we can still go ahead and finish Axis without much problem at all. So I wanted to do the normal raid because I really, really wanted the gauntlets for my Warlock. I really want that increased chance of heavy ammo. That is an amazing perk, absolutely love it. And of course, my Warlock did not get it. He got a rocket launcher, and then I went ahead and opened up the chest and got a rocket launcher. So RNG absolutely despises me. Must have got about six different rocket launchers. Absolutely hate it. Hate it, hate it, hate it. I am not a fan of that rocket launcher at all. I said it in yesterday's video, and I'll probably make a video at some point as to why I hate that rocket launcher so much. But we're in here, and we're with some clan members, and one person who has never done the raid before. So this is a really good reason to go ahead and talk about the Dark Trigger being able to cover up some things and cover up mistakes that might be made, because chances are, Things like that are going to happen in the hard rate, especially since there are no revives. And that's going to mean at some point, somebody is going to fall. And in King's Fall, whenever somebody fell, it was pretty much a wipe. In this raid, whenever somebody falls, we're going to have to wait and see. And that's what I'm really curious about with the Dark Trigger, because it deals out so much damage. Now, everybody by now has seen Dado's video, where he does a damage comparison of the different swords. And the Dark Trigger just is hands above and just stands tall above all the other swords easily. It even stands taller than all of the other heavy weapons in the game. In fact, the Dark Trigger alone deals out more damage than a Sleeper Simulant with Weapons of Light here on Axis. That's how much damage it does. It is absolutely ridiculous. So go ahead and figure that if you then put down a Weapons of Light bubble and a Tether, you're gonna be dealing out massive, massive damage. Now watch right here. As I'm going down to go ahead and get into position the sword, you can see that we actually miss stunning Axis. So Axis goes over there and we take a look at his health and it didn't look too bad. I mean, obviously it's not good. We didn't get through three phases. We didn't get through our sword phase. But overall for our first two phases, that's not too bad. And since we have the Dark Trigger, we decided to instead of wiping and starting over, we're just going to go for it. Why not go for it? So this is why I'm saying that the Dark Trigger is so good right now. Because, spoiler alert, we are going to finish off this battle and we are going to get the kill despite really just messing up in the beginning. Despite really messing up. So, I'm really curious about if this is going to be the go-to weapon for the hard raid. So, I already know, basically my exotics that I want to level up first for the hard raid tomorrow is going to be the Sleeper Simulant. I'm going to want to use that on Vosik. And that's pretty much the only area of the raid that I actually want to use the Sleeper Simulant. Everything else... I pretty much can swap over to the Dark Trigger. So after that we've got the Siege Engine, but mainly for that I'm going to go ahead and use my Sniper in the beginning, or probably more likely I'm going to go ahead and pop my Stormcaller Stormtrance and take care of the adds. And then whenever we're running the parts back I'll probably have my Dark Trigger out and use that on all of the different captains, that and my Super. Just assuming that there's not anything too too crazy that goes on with the hard mode. You know, mechanics are probably going to change. After that. We're back in Axis Phase 1, pretty much after the Siege Engine, we're at Axis Phase 1, and we're going to have Captain, so I might as well have my sword for that. And then Axis Phase 2, might as well have my sword for that. So I really don't need any heavy, aside from just my Sleeper Simulant for Vosik, and that might not even be a massive necessity. I mean, right now my Sleeper Simulant is sitting at 385. I don't imagine the beginning of the raid is going to be much higher than 385 to begin with. So even if I didn't even infuse the Sleeper Simulant anymore, I think it's going to be more than fine to deal with Vosik. And like I said, I don't really need it in any other phase of the battle. I only need it for that one phase of the battle. 
After that, it's going to be the Dark Drinker all the way. Now, when else have we ever had a chance to use swords the entire way? The reason why we're able to do it is because Axis gets stunned and doesn't have an area of effect ground pound that pretty much every other boss has ever had in Destiny, where whenever you get close to melee, you can't really get close because you're just going to instantly die. So that's the really nice thing about Axis is you can get close, you're not going to get ground pounded, and you're going to be able to deal out damage. That's why the sleeper is not really as needed, and that's why swords are going to be something that you can actually use. Pretty cool, and it's just one of the reasons why, you know, people haven't been using the swords on Crota or Atheon or King's Fall Orcs, <laughs> of course not. You know, those things just wouldn't work there, but they will work here, and that's why that this is kind of like a little bit of a hidden gem, and that's why as Datto made that video and showed off the raw damage numbers, everybody just kind of stopped and was like, oh wow, this... This is the way to go about doing things. I mean, look at this. We are just pouring out the damage on him. Pouring out the damage. And sadly, you could see that I really ran out of my sword ammo. It's because I barely had any to start with. But I'm going to go ahead and get back to this column. And I'm going to pop it with my Radagast artifact on and my sword out. I made a video a few days ago about Radagast artifact. And if you have your sword out, you'll get up to that 88 max ammo. If you don't have your sword out and you pop a synth, you only get your maximum ammo that you would get normally, which in my case is 68. Again, that is with one ammo perk and one damage dealing perk for your special ability, which is what I strongly, strongly recommend doing. So because Dark Drinker is pretty much the flavor of the day, and like I said, it's an eraser. It's basically a mistake eraser. If you lose one person right now in the normal raid, you wouldn't even have to revive them because you deal out so much damage with the Dark Trigger that you can actually afford to lose somebody's DPS. You've got enough platforms, you easily have enough platforms to go ahead and make up the DPS that's lost from one person. And we're gonna see that in the hard raid. I don't know how much stronger Axis is going to be. No idea, no idea how much stronger Axis is going to be. But I can tell you that some of your hunter buddies your Titan buddies, your Warlock buddies who aren't on self-res or who do not have their super up. Somebody's gonna die, whether it's from a Siva Swarm, whether it's from a Scorch Captain, whether it's from a Shank, whether it's from some new mechanic that's just coming out. Somebody is going to die, and you're gonna have to make up that DPS. Would you be able to make up that DPS with the Sleeper Simulant? Maybe. Galahorn, maybe. Sniper Rifles like the Black Spindle, maybe. But with the Dark Drinker, I'm saying absolutely you can make that up. So if you're going into the hard raid, try to get everybody to have the Dark Drinker. I know, right now what we're saying is we're basically back to Crota and we're like, you know, if you don't have the Dark Drinker, you can't come in. Well, that's not really the case. I'm just saying that the Dark Drinker is going to be your best option right now. And it's not like RNG. I know a lot of people get really salty whenever they hear about specific weapons being the most useful. but Remember, whenever we had Crota and we had Galahorn, it was RNG only. The reason why Galahorn only was so frustrating was because you could play the game from launch up until Crota's raid was going on, and you could still have missed the Galahorn just because you didn't have RNG luck. There was absolutely no skill, no nothing that you could do to get the Galahorn in year one. Absolutely nothing you can do. If somebody doesn't have a Galahorn now, that's their fault. It's not your fault that they don't have a Galahorn now, because you can easily go ahead and do a quest for a Galahorn right away. But back in year one, that just simply was not the case. And the Dark Drinker, it's similar, because it's a quest again. It is not an RNG thing. You can specifically force yourself to get the Dark Drinker. So you can have a little bit of soft spot and a little bit of pity for somebody that might not have one, but at the same time, they can go out and get one. This isn't something where they're at the mercy of anything other than their own ability to go out and do the quest. So that's why I don't feel too too bad about strongly strongly recommending people have the Dark Drinker. Again, not that you can't do it with all Dark Drinkers or without all Dark Drinkers. We don't even have all Dark Drinkers in here. Somebody's actually using the Raze Lighter in this run and somebody is using a Sleeper Simulant in this run. So you don't need all Dark Drinkers obviously, but they're gonna help. And I have a really strong feeling in the beginning of the hard mode, they're going to help out a whole lot because it's going to be new to all of us. And, you know, we've been running through the raid. We haven't had permadeath. 
Hard Raid always seems to be permadeath, even though I really hate that mechanic. I think it's an awful mechanic for raids. But it's going to be here, it's going to be permadeath, and you're probably at some point going to need to cover the damage from other people that happen to fall. If you want to potentially beat the Hard Raid. And you can see right here, whenever we go to our final damage stuff, almost 3 million damage with the Dark Drinker, and it's not like I had perfect runs at all. I left damage on the table. But it's pretty good. It's pretty good, and I strongly recommend you go ahead and level it up and take it into the raid as your main heavy of choice for pretty much the entire raid. Anyway, guys and gals, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, smack that like button and subscribe to the channel. Check out these awesome videos. Good luck with your raids, your drops, your hard mode, and I'll see you around in Destiny. Drinking that dark.